In this video, we'll look at the full hypothesis testing procedure using spreadsheets. Now, we're going to have to do three examples to cover everything, but the first thing you want to decide is what are your hypothesis statements? And right away, this will tell you am I working with the mean or proportion? In other courses, you can test things like the standard deviation as well, but we'll be limited to the mean and proportion. In this first example, it's clearly clear that we are testing the mean and a population standard deviation is known. So we want to state our hypotheses and we can always start off with H0, All right, that'll be our null hypothesis, and then H1, that'll be our alternative hypothesis. And then we want to decide whether we're doing the mean or standard deviation for these, and so that would be the mean for this one, so we'll put in the symbol for the mean. And then you want to think about what the alternative and uh, alternative and null hypothesis would be from translating the claims in the problem. In this problem, the claim is that uh, Jeffrey has a new pair of expensive goggles, and uh, Frank th thinks that the goggles help Jeffrey to swim faster than his previous swim times. So Frank's claim is that his average swim time has decreased because he swimmed faster. So this would be mu is less than. And uh, his previous time as average was 16.43. Now, whatever number you have in one hypothesis, you'll add in the other. Um, so from direct translation, we see the alternative hypothesis is uh, less than. And that means that this one could be either an equals or a greater than or equal. We'll just put equals. So there's our hypotheses. And we want to figure out the type of test. And from the alternative hypothesis, you can see that less than pointing to the left, you can tell this is a left tailed test. Okay, and then we want to um, identify the type of distribution. And this is a normal distribution. And the reason is because the standard deviation for the population is known. We can state the uh, level of significance. And it's given to be 0 0.05. All right. Uh, then we want to set up our sample statistics. And uh, we have the uh, sample mean. It's given to be 16. Sample size is 15. And uh, we don't have a sample standard deviation. We'll be using the population standard deviation. And we'll use 0 0.8 is what they gave us.
All right. Um, now we want to go ahead and calculate what we need to for this uh, p-value. All right. And so we saw from calculating p-values before that we need to look at the adjusted standard deviation. Um, so we'll do the uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And that would be the standard deviation here divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay, so there's our standard deviation. And we now want to find the, um, the p-value. And remember, this is a left-tailed test. So in the left-tailed test case, we would just find the area in the left tail, and that's just going to use the norm dist function the way it is. And we'll look at the sample mean and to the left with the mean of the population mean, using that above, 16.43. And then the standard deviation is the one we just created, and then the cumulative is 1. So this will find our p-value. Remember, if it was a two-tailed test, you would have to double that. And if it was a right-tailed test, uh, you would put uh, one minus at the beginning. So. All right, uh, then we want to get a picture of this, and uh, you get a picture that looks something like that in the book. And you can hand draw that, or you can uh, find a, a generic normal curve on the internet, and from that, from that generic curve, you can just do some uh, comp some stuff with a uh, software. And then there's some software that will actually draw a picture of this for you. There's a picture of the p-value we'd like. Let me do a better note here. So we'll say that this is left tailed, and uh, and then maybe under here I'll put the right tailed case. And then the two-tailed case we saw before, that was uh, two times whichever one is going to be smaller, whichever one you would normally use. But here we're just really using the, the left tail case. We'll cover that up. All right. Um, then we make our decision. And the decision is made that we would reject and we do that because P is less than alpha. Right, P is 0 0.018 and alpha is 0 0.05. So since P is less than alpha we would reject. And the conclusion The 
sample data supports the claim that the new goggles or say that uh, Jeffrey swims faster with the new goggles. Right, that was the alternative hypothesis that he uh, swim time had decreased and he swam faster. So that's what we do. And that's a complete hypothesis test there. Now, this could all be adjusted having actual sample data. So if you had sample data, would get to right here and the sample mean and standard deviation sample mean and sample size would be calculated from sample data so the sample mean would be the average of that sample data and the sample size would be the count or the amount of data that you have So, I mean, I can put in some sample data here. So we had 16 and 16, and we can put in 15 of them. There. And you get, of course, the same results, um, since we now have a, a sample that has uh, a mean of 15 and a sample size. Sorry, sample mean of 16 and a sample size of 15. Uh, of course, chances are he didn't have a 15 swim times that were all 16 seconds. They just averaged to 16 seconds. Um, but you can see that we now have a new setup here. So if you have with sample data, and again those formulas there, I just went down to 80 to make sure that I include this data set. If if you have more than 65 numbers, you're probably still going to have to extend that. But chances are you won't. And then here I went down to 102. So kind of arbitrary ending points. Remember these functions skip all the blank spots. Um, and again here that's population standard deviation is still something that you uh, would have put in there automatically. Okay, so this shows uh, one of the ways to do this. Let's uh, now move to our next example.